Hello students, uh, this is the lecture 3 of your city lab and in this lecture I am going to discuss about the various types of the bricks, mortar and the concrete. So bricks are uh, very common building material used for the construction and it uh, generally used uh, for building walls pavements and other and, and in other masonry construction so bricks are uh, produced uh, when the natural clay is mixed with the water and after converting into a desired shape it gets uh, dried up and fired in the kiln at a temperature around 1000 degrees Celsius. The composition of the bricks are uh, generally, it uh, contains uh, silica in very large concentration. That's around uh, 50 to 60 percent silica. Okay, and after silica, the other composition are alumina, alumina is uh, uh, present uh, in the range of 20 to 30 percent, 20 to 30 percent, then lime is there around 6% and the manganese or iron oxides are also present in less than 5%. The size of the bricks as per the Bureau of Indian Standard is 190 into 90 into 90 mm and the nominal brick size that generally used for the construction purpose is a 230 into 115 into 75 mm. Classification of the bricks. The bricks are generally classified as first class brick, second class, third class and overburned brick depending upon its characteristics. This is the picture is showing the first class brick. Okay, so this first class brick are of uniform shape and uh, it has uh, high strength above 10 Newton per mm square and uh, it also give ringing sound when they are struck with each other. This picture shows the second class brick. Uh, second class brick has uh, less strength in comparison to the first class brick. And uh, the shape is also not as regular as that of first class brick. And this is the picture of third class brick. So it's having a very poor strength and it can't be used for any construction work. And it uh, do not provide good strength. The characteristics of the first class bricks are it should be well burnt and reddish in color. They have parallel and sharp edges. They have uniform texture and uh, they will give ringing sound when they are struck with each other. 
द वॉटर एब्जॉर्बन इन द फर्स्ट क्लास ब्रेक should not be more than 15% when it is immersed in the water uh, for a period of 24 hours so when this first class break immersed in the water for about 24 hours then it should not absorb water more than 15% and the compressive strength of the first class break Uh, should not be less than 10 newton per mm square and one more point is uh, that uh, when these brick uh, will fall at a height of 1.5 meter then it will not uh, broken down it will not broken down so please remember all these characteristics characteristics of second class brick it should be also well burned but it is slightly over burning it is slightly over burned and uh, it is basically known as moderate quality bricks some irregularity is there in the shape and it also give metallic or ringing sound here in the second class brick the strength uh, should not be less than 7 newton per mm square and when this second class brick immersed in the water for uh, for 24 hours then the water absorption should not be more than 20% and one more important point is uh, that if we is scratch the brick from the finger then some marks will be formed on the surface of the brick but in the case of first class brick if we is scratch the brick from the nail then no mark or no impression are generally formed when uh, the um, bricks are scratched with the nails okay so now move to the uh, characteristic of the third class brick third class brick is poor uh, is a very poor quality brick and it has soft and yellow color it produced dull sound when they are struck with each other and the strength also very less it is around 3.5 to 5 newton per mm square and when this quality when the this third glass brick is immersed in a water for about 24 hours then uh, the water absorption is about more than 25% of its weight now the next category is the jamma class brick it's uh, irregular in shape and very dark in color the dark color is due to the over burn because generally the bricks are burnt in the kiln at a temperature of 1000 degrees celsius but here in the jamma class brick uh, they are uh, burnt even that uh, high temperature that's up to 14 or 1500 degree celsius and this category of brick has a good compressive strength very strong in compressive strength but it has a uh, low in porosity and absorption because they are highly burnt brick now next is the mortar mortar it's it's uh, basically a mixture of binding material uh, that is the fine aggregate cement and the water in the mortar there is uh, no uh, only fine aggregate is there and no coarse aggregate 
तो प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस पॉइंट दैट कोर्स एग्रीगेट is not uh, present in the mortar so mortar has only fine aggregate and binding material binding material is used generally cement or any other binding material binding material the material that uh, binds the ag uh, that binds the fine aggregate and the cement with each other mortar is uh, basically hardens to bind uh, building blocks such as uh, stones bricks and concrete masonry unit there are various types of mortar that is cement mortar lime mortar and mud mortar in cement mortar it is the mixture of cement and sand it is a mixture of cement and sand mixture of cement and sand in various uh, proportion either they are in the ratio of 1 is to 3 1 is to 4 1 is to 6 it means that one part of the cement and three part of the sand here in 1 is to 4 means one part of the cement and four part of the fine aggregate that is sand so in the cement mortar there is a mixture of cement and sand in various uh, proportion like 1 is to 3 1 is to 4 and 1 is to 6 1 is to 7 1 is to 8 lime mortar it is a mixture of lime powder and surkhi along with the water okay here also it is in various proportion that is in 1 is to 1 or 1 is to 2 in uh, the last category that is the mud mortar in mud mortar it is a mixture of mixture of uh, clay and uh, silt and sand clay and after clay we have silt plus sand so this is a mixture of uh, silt and sand and clay along with the water so next is the concrete what is the basic difference between the mortar and the concrete is that in mortar we gen we don't mixed any coarse aggregate particle but in the concrete the mixture of binding material fine aggregate and coarse aggregate along with the water is known as the concrete so in concrete the coarse aggregates are present this is there are various types of concretes are there number first is the plain concrete and ordinary concrete it is the most commonly type of uh, concrete which generally used in the construction of pavements in this uh, concrete there, there are no steel bars steel bars are generally not uh, provided in the plain concrete and the constituents are the cement sand and aggregate mixed with the water typically in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 4 lightweight concrete lightweight concrete uh, is uh, that type of concrete uh, which are uh, which is generally prepared by using the lightweight aggregate and the lightweight aggregate uh, include uh, pumice shales and clays so if uh, 
the the aggregate of these rocks are used then the overall density of the concrete become lights and uh, as a result of which uh, the concrete is said to be as a lightweight concrete and it has very low thermal conductivity as well high density concrete uh, is that type of concrete that generally used uh, in the x-rays and radiation um, in x-rays and radiation shield to protect the people which are working in that department it also used in the nuclear power plants and other such buildings which are uh, uh, prone to the um, high x-rays or gamma rays so in high density concrete uh, it is manufactured by using the rushed rocks which has a very high density reinforced concrete is that type of concrete in which uh, the steel rods wires mesh or cab or cable generally embedded in a concrete uh, before the concrete hardened up So when these uh, steel bars are embedded in the concrete, then the resultant concrete adds the combination of the concrete as well as the reinforcement, which generally provided in the form of steel rods, wires, etc. So this overall material is known as the reinforced concrete. That is reinforced concrete beams, columns, uh, slabs. So all these are made from reinforced concrete. The precast concrete, uh, it is that type of concrete that is uh, prepared, cast, and cured off-site, usually in controlled factory environment. So precast uh, concrete elements are joined together to form a certain type of the complete structure. So it is that type of concrete that is. Uh, prepared and cured off-site that is prepared in either some other uh, location and then uh, brought up by some uh, with the help of some mechanism or uh, cranes at a location where the work is going on so pre-stressed concrete now next one is the pre-stressed concrete it is um, the form of concrete where the initial compressive strength is given in the concrete. Um, and in this concrete, uh, the pre-stressing wire is generally applied. So here the initial compressive uh, compression or compressive strength is already given before the applying of the external load so that the stress from the external loads are counteracted in a desired way at the time of the, at the during the uh, service period. So this is the picture of railway sleepers. So this is an example of the pre-stressed concrete pre-stressed concrete okay so uh, why it is called as pre-stressed concrete because uh, and as you see these four black holes and this is also on the opposite side so from here to here these type of wires are uh, generally provided and this wire is known as the pre-stressing wire, pre-stressing wire. Okay, so this wire is generally known as pre-stressing wire and uh, by applying this uh, pre-stressing wire, the initial compression is given and as a result of which a large compressive strength is obtained um, by giving a, a small a smaller dimension block 
so by giving the smaller dimension a large strength can be achieved with the help of the pre-stressing wire so this is the advantage of the pre-stressed concrete or you can say that the large strength is obtained um, in a, a small uh, uh, weight of concrete in a, a small size of the concrete So these are the rates of the mild steel FE 250, FE 500, FE 415, FE 550. What does, what does this number denote? This number denotes the yield strength. Okay. Yield strength. So FE 250 means uh, HYSD steel bar or mild steel bars which has a yield strength of 250 Newton per mm square. So FE 550 means mild steel HYST bar which has the yield strength of 550 Newton per mm square. If you plot this stress versus this red diagram stress versus this red diagram of mild steel bar and it is of sum of like this okay so up to this point uh, if uh, you unload the, the steel bar then it uh, gets converted into its original shape meaning thereby that no elongation Start uh, started in the steel bar, then this point is known as the yield strength. When after the after this point, the elong the steel bars is elongated due to the application of the load, meaning thereby that the yielding of the steel bar has started. So before this point, so this is known as the yield strength. Okay, now understand. I think <laughs> aggregate. Aggregates are the inert material which uh, produces the mass of the whole concrete structure. And uh, there are various types of aggregate. It is fine aggregate and coarse aggregate. The fine aggregate is that aggregate uh, in which uh, if the majority of the particles passes through the 4.75 mmc. Okay, so if the majority of the particles passes through 4.75 mm C then that sample or uh, that sand is known as the fine aggregate the example are the sand and surfing in the case of coarse aggregate here the large number of the particles is retained on 4.75 mm sieve meaning thereby that the large particles are not uh, passes through the uh, this uh, 4.75 mm sieve so this is the two main difference between the two the example of the coarse aggregates are stone blast and brick blast, etc. Which is the large stone that generally yeah, you have seen across in the concrete construction. So this is known as a stone blast and brick blast. Well graded aggregate and poorly graded coarse aggregate. Well graded means the aggregate contains the sizes of different in suitable proportion. That is the different sizes of the aggregate in suitable proportion. Then it is called as the graded aggregate. For example, in a particular mix, there are some part of some uh, aggregate of uh, 50 mm. Okay some aggregates are of size 30 mm and some aggregates are of size 20 mm so it means that it is a well graded coarse aggregate which contains 
all the different uh, size of the aggregate. It is called well graded aggregate. It is of good quality because the voids are minimum here and it also provide the good strength in the concrete. Now the poorly graded coarse aggregate is that where the size of the particular that is the, the size of the aggregate or particular size is more. Meaning thereby that only 50 mm size aggregate is more. So it contains aggregate particles that are almost of the same size. So that uh, condition is known as the poorly graded coarse aggregate. Meaning thereby that there is a small variation in the size of the particles of the aggregate. So this is all about the lecture regarding the bricks, cement and mortar. Uh, just uh, go through it and uh, repair the report. Okay, thank you.